My name is Donna. Welcome to the um, In a Pickle Knitting Podcast. I'll be your host today, which is Wednesday, September 6th, and I'm coming to you from the northern part of Virginia in the U.S. This is a podcast about knitting and some sewing as well, and perhaps other crafts from time to time, but today it'll just be knitting and some old sewing. Uh, start off with some finished objects. I have quite a few. I'm a little bit late coming to you with this podcast, a little over a week. I was out of town for uh, 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 several days taking my mom, my sister and I took my mom to Sanibel Island for a much deserved little vacation and rest and celebration as she's just completed her um, six months of chemotherapy and so we wanted to give her a chance to get away and to say how happy we were that her first scan has come back clean. So we're, we had a really great time. It rained every day, but we got out there on the beach anyway and had a great time. So um, that left me a little short on time to come to you in a timely way for the podcast today, for which I will apologize. So, but I do have more finished objects because it was a little longer. And the first one that I'll show you is a pair of socks that I've shown before as works in, work in progress. And these are what I'm calling my Sea Garden socks. They were knit from a Gales Art sock blank. And so they don't match. Colors the same, but knit from the sock blank, they don't match, which I'm perfectly okay with. I did knit them as an afterthought everything pair of socks. So knit a really long tube with a cup at the top and a cup at the bottom, and then took them apart in the middle, added toes, and added afterthought heels. So these are my Gales Art um, Sea Garden sock socks. And they this is what's left of the sock blank, which I think is enough to knit another sock, not another pair of socks, but maybe if you knit shorty socks, you could probably get two pair out of a sock blank like that. And here is the tag for Gail's Art Sparkle Sock Blank. There is Stellina in there. And I will say I started off this pair of socks using my 8-inch Addy Circulars, but I had to switch to Magic Loop, which I went to the Chaigu Mini um, Twist Sock Needles um, and one, one at a time, but doing Magic Loop. Because for some reason, the um, join on that that circular that short circular needle started to pull on the yarn, and um, it, they hadn't done it on another pair of socks that I had knit, but uh, did this time. So they, they turned out fine. Um, it really not much of a changing gauge. I did change my size of the needle, which you'd have to consult my project page. It was probably 1.5 um, needle, but I don't recall right now. Sorry. And my second finished object is another pair of socks, and this was for my um, Agatha Christie Knit Along. I did uh, Miss Marple themed socks. The pattern is called um, St. Mary Mead, and it's by Olivia Villarreal. And here is, well, one, I'll just hold one up there, it is a pair. And I knit them toe up, which I don't normally do, but it worked out well with her pattern and you can see the very easily memorizable lace pattern. I think I had it memorized after the first round. I did add a German short row heel. She does a short row heel and I just did German short row. She says you can uh, substitute a different kind of short row, which I did. And um, I have to say, I think this is maybe the second time I've done one and I don't think for me I'll be doing that. My arch is just too high and these stretch, even though this is lace, um, it pulls right through there. So I actually, my afterthought heels don't pull as much as this does. So I don't think this is really for me. me. Um, so these are finished pair of socks and the yarn was by Cauldron of Colors in the Aunt Jane's Cottage Garden colorway. And I am, do have a knit along for Agatha Christie, anything you do Agatha Christie, any kind of a connection to that. It's in our, the Ravelry group, in a pickle knitting group. And um, I have a skein of this yarn. 
a different colorway, but the same sock yarn. It was very nice to knit with, and I, I did enjoy um, knitting these socks. Both pair of socks will go into my box of socks for the Box of Socks Cal, hosted by Kristen of Yarngasm Podcast. And um, I have done more than 12 pair now, so I, I don't have to keep going, um, but you can do as many as you'd like, so I will continue doing um, socks. I have a couple pair that are works in progress in right now and lots more pair, many more pairs planned for the year. I had set forth some goals for myself this year to do different things. And um, this is one thing, um, was to do lace patterns, and I've done several now, and to do sock blank, which I have now done two, and to do afterthought um, everything socks, I've now done two pair. So I just I have several other kinds of goals for this year, and I'm thinking about some different ones for next year. So my next finished object also goes along with, whoops, so easy to drop things when you're trying not to look. Um, the, I have a stuffy along, which is for any stuffy that you would like to knit that uses 50 grams of yarn. And I did um, mine out of Lolo Did It yarn. One colorway is called Naked Hippo, which is the gray. The other one is called Hello Gorgeous, which is the light pink. And this is Roxy the Hippo. And uh, the kit that I ordered came with the yarn, and I have enough left over to do at least one more if I wanted to. So I think I may just use these leftover for my um, scrappy blankets and crochet blanket and um, heels, toes, and cuffs, because it does have nylon in the this yarn. I think it was 10% nylon. I'll double check here. It's... Um, 75% superwash merino, 15% nylon, and 10% tensile. It's a very soft yarn. I really enjoyed using it. And so here is Roxy. I think she's really cute. They had a variety of eye colors you could choose from. I just said send me whatever because I did know that I had quite a few of these safety eyes that I could use if I didn't care for the color. But I used what they sent, which are really cute. And so this is Roxy the Hippo. And um, a lot of fun to knit. I will say, though, I'm not the world's fastest knitter. I knit fast enough for me. Um, but I had heard, I think it was Yarn Hoarder say on her podcast that um, she did it in a day. Well, mine was more like two and a half. And that would have been if I just uh, had a lot of knitting time in those days. So it took me quite a bit longer. So my next finished object is something that goes along with my charity knit along. And I had shown you um, in a previous episode a hat that I wanted to do. I've actually done this hat once before for a friend and gave it to her. Um, but I did not put the cables on the top of uh, that particular hat. I was in a hurry to get it to her and I'd already had to stop and um, take some work out and make this band across the bottom bigger. So I, was, did, I didn't want to delay on that, so I didn't do the cables, but they really didn't take very much time, other than really what took the time was you had to purl. And I would rather have not had to purl on the hat. That did make it take a lot longer. But it has four cables. You can see they come together at the top. This is made out of a Pima cotton yarn, and um, so it's breathable and washable and should be comfortable. It's very soft. Um, it's a mercerized cotton, so it has a smooth finish to it. On this head, it looks like it's slouchy, but I put it on my head, and it's not slouchy at all. And in fact, when you take it off of this, it doesn't look particularly good. It, it doesn't look smooth and straight, but on the head, it looks fine. It's just the, the nature of the cotton yarn, and blocking doesn't usually help as much like it would with a wool hat. But I didn't want to do wool. Um, because it is for somebody who's going to want some softness on their scalp. This is how much yarn I had left over. Um, I did weigh it, I think it was maybe 22, 23 grams. So it took about 75 to make the hat. And this particular yarn is Blue Ridge Yarns Cotton Candy Yarn, which is in the berry colorway. It's a DK weight yarn. So another DK weight would work for this pattern and produce a hat probably about this size. Don't remember what size needles I used, um, but it is on my project page. I keep very complete project pages on um, Ravelry. Um, on Ravelry, I am C L A U S S D K. I'll put that on the screen. Anything I say, I try to put on the screen. 
I also have show notes over in my Ravelry group and a Pickle Knitting Ravelry group for the episode today. There will be show notes, probably get them up by tomorrow. Um, and in the show notes, I will um, give you any more information. If I don't tell you something you want to know, or if um, there is a, something you can suggest for improvements or any sort of suggestion at all, I would welcome it. And you can put that either at the bottom um, down YouTube where there are a place for comments or in the Ravelry group, there's a place to ask questions. You could put it there or you could put it with the episode. Any of those places would be fine. I did want to say I got that pattern from this book called Knit Pink, 25 Patterns to Knit for Comfort, Gratitude, and Charity. And it's by Lorna Miser. And um, most things in here knit in pink. Of course, you don't have to knit them in, knit any color you want. It did. Ha it does have hats and scarves and shawls and um, socks and things of that nature. Wa I think hot water bottle cover in here. So the, this hat was called the Entwined Hat, and you can find it in this book. Okay, so those were the finished objects that I believe I've shown you before as works in progress or a planned work. But what happened was I ended up stopping some things I was working on and focused on making something else, um, six something else's. When I, re I, I knew I was going to the beach with my sister and my mom, and um, I knew I had promised to make um, six hats for my sister's six granddaughters, but it just hit me about a week before we were gonna go. I ought to just get them made and take them with me and, and let her have them. And that would, um, that might make things easier, but I didn't get through all six. I did get four made. Uh, I had three done and finished one while I was there and then didn't like the way the fifth one came out. So I started that one over. So I just brought them all back anyway and said, I'll, if I have to send two, I'll just send them all at the same time. And that way I can share them on the podcast. So the first, what, what I've done with the, the girls is um, there is a set of twins and then there, um, my nephew has two daughters and my niece has four daughters. She has the twins and I wanted to make hats that were somewhat the same uh, and somewhat different. So I started with what I thought was going to be the hats for the twins with a little kit called Top This. It's by DMC, it's an acrylic yarn, and what it is is every kit has um, the skein of yarn in here, and it, through the top here, they've got a little stuffed object that tops the hat. The yarn that's in there is always um, three different colors, so you knit for so long and it changes automatically for you. And I had made one for my grandson uh, last year just because it was so cute with a little, his was a little blue with the teddy bear on top. And I saw this one that had this snowflake on the top. And I thought, oh, that just for some reason reminded me of the, the girls. So this one starts with this uh, variegated and then it goes to white and then this real soft, um, fluffy, fuzzy type and back to this and back to white. The second hat had a longer section of the um, variegated at the beginning. So they aren't quite identical. They're also not quite the same size because I had had my sister measure the girls' heads, and I did make, um, so it, they turned out bigger than I thought they were gonna do. So after the first one was done, I decided, well, these can be for the bigger girls. So um, I, th I think they'll like them. They're um, on my project page. I did not use the entire skein, just based on the size I wanted the hat to be. But um, I think they turn out pretty cute. I think, th I hope they'll like them. So that was the first one uh, set. Those two hats topped this. So one of the girls and my one of my nephew's daughters and one of my niece's daughters will have these hats. Their oldest, and then the the um, youngest in one family and the one before the twins in my niece's family will get this next hat. So there are two like this. One's a little bit bigger than the other based on their head sizes. And this is just really no pattern, just um, trying to figure out, you know, how wide around their hat heads and added some pearl and stripe little details in there and a big pom-pom on the back. So I have two like that. And then I started off to make um, 
the Twins hats. And this pattern is on Ravelry. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's called Mrs. Claus Boxy Hat. And it's a square. And then on either ends of the square, of course, you know, you, you're knitting in the round, but it goes on the head and then these little, you put little pom-poms and they drag down. Really cute, the picture. I'm not done yet because when I made the first one, I really wasn't following the pattern. I had seen it and I thought, okay, well, that looks easy enough. But then my proportions were off or the size, so it just didn't look good. So um, I changed and just went to the pattern, decided to do it. This is actually a work in progress. It's almost done. I'm going to knit until this is about uh, seven and a quarter inches. This, th these will be for the twins. So I'm doing one in this. Um, I'll tell you about the yarn in a second. And I'm going to do the second one in just solid purple because I want them to be able to tell their hats apart. So in each family, they'll all be different so that everyone knows what hat they have. Oh, I, did, I forgot to tell you, the yarn on this one is a Cascade Yarns Quattro, which is a, the pink and white stranded together. And then the white is the exact same. It, it's Cascade Yarns. It's a 220 superwash. It's in their white, I think, 871 colorway. So I'm using that same white 871 colorway for the rib on here and the pom-poms. And then I'll do the other one in just the, the purple. So the purple is um, the Cascade 220 Superwash. And that color number is 1969 for the solid purple. And I'll drop my tag again. Sorry, I always seem to drop something. This was a new Cascade yarn that I hadn't seen before. It's a 220 Superwash Effects. So I guess maybe the major dyers are starting to try to do a little bit more like indie dyed like yarn might look. I'm just guessing on that. I don't know. Um, this color is called Lightning Storm, and I believe it's color 10. Lightning Storm. So Superwash Effects, color 10 Lightning Storm. And then just that white 871 Cascade 220 for the, uh, what do you, not the cuff, but well, maybe, it, I don't know, on a sock it's your cuff. I don't know what that is. The bottom part of your hat, right now it's leaving my brain. Okay, so that's a work in progress. So I have to do, finish this one and make the pom-poms and do the second one. But I should be done with that quickly. And I do want to get that off in the mail too, so that it's just, you know, check off something on the Christmas list. I made my pom-poms using the Clover pom-pom maker. This is a lar the largest one that I have. I don't know if they make a larger one. I haven't seen a larger one. But I really like making the pom-poms on this and um, makes a really full pom-pom. And there's lots of tutorials out on YouTube for how to do it because I'd thrown the instructions away. I'd made one years ago, lost the instructions, threw them away, something. And um, I always think I'm going to remember. If I make one, it's like, oh, well, I won't, I'll remember how to do that. And then five years later, you look at it and go, uh, how did I do that? I don't know. So um, I did look it up on YouTube, watched a, a little tutorial, and made great pom-poms. So... Um, next work in progress I showed you, I, I think, on the very first podcast. This is episode three, by the way. I know I didn't say that at the beginning. And I'm using a lollipop self-striping yarn called Beam Me Up. And this is um, an 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon from Lollipop Yarns. And I, when I showed it to you before, I think it might have been oh, around here someplace. And I don't work on this very much, um, but as I told you, I went to Sanibel Island, and so I had a lot of airport time. As this was my coming back airport project. Um, my sister and mother come from Colorado, and I came from Virginia, and we met there. And so going back, their flight was a lot earlier than my flight back. There's only one a day for me. And so I had a lot of time to sit around at the airport, which doesn't bother me because I can just knit. So I, I'm ready now to put in the toe. I, I decided um, I would just do one at a time. This is my kind of on-the-go project. I'm using 1.5 Carbons DPNs. And here's what the ball looks like. It come, She sends it come wound up in this uh, um, gobstopper ball, I guess it's called. And there's also a uh, mini also wound for you um, to do the heels, cuffs, and toes. I'm sure this is enough to do all three. I did not do the cuff in it, and I'm just, but I'm gonna do the heels and toes in this bright uh, highlighter yellow color. It looks a little, a little bright there. Mm, I can't get the light off of it, but it's, it is pretty bright, but I don't think it's as 
right or blown out as it's being shown on the screen. So that'll be um, when I get the toe in and I'll put an afterthought heel in and start the other one. So I made a little progress on that. Uh, moving on to my next pair of socks. This was my September cast on and I do have the ball band but where I put it I don't know. I put it in a really safe place so I'd have it today and I can't find it. Um, I will show it to you in the future if, um, if, when I run across it. This is yarn from Yarn Enabler, um, an indie dyer in, from in Canada, and she's she and um, her friend Christina from the Cozy Knitter do a joint podcast called Dye Another Day. There hasn't been one in a while. I think Amanda, who dyed this yarn, has been quite ill. Um, I did see her post on Instagram. She's going to be at a, sh a show up in Canada, someplace maybe Toronto. And um, so it sounds like maybe she's on the mend. I hope so. I enjoy their podcast so much and their yarn. I am loving this yellow, well, all of it, this yarn. It feels so nice to knit with. It's thicker feeling. So um, I had wanted to, I'm just making the pattern up. I had wanted to add those lines on a pencil and pencils are hexagons. So I wanted, you know, six sections here and so it was either 60 or 72 and first I started off with 72 and when I realized the yarn was puffier I decided to go down to 60 and up to I believe a 1.5 needle but the yarn is really neat it um, you get a little mini skein that goes from black to brown and then you switch to your pencil color and then when you're ready for your cuff you've got this gray that turns into pink for the metal band and the eraser at the top and I've seen these socks a lot um, on the internet. I think it's one way maybe Amanda became so famous with her yarn was from this. And she has also has colored pencils, and, uh, yarns, and a notebook paper, which I think looks interesting to do. I wish though that I had done this a different way because I think those lines would look so much better if it were the inside. But anyway, I think they look great. Um, these are my September socks. School starts in September. I was a teacher for many years, so they fit fit me. And I, I actually bought this quite a while ago and couldn't wait to, for September to cast those on for my box of socks, Cal. Um, the next thing that's a work in progress is a pair of mittens that I'm making for my grandson. And I got the idea from this book that um, we have this set of books that has the, all four seasons. And I just love that rainbow and I thought, oh, I can, you know, make him some rainbow mittens. And I did, um, I do have a rainbow pack of minis that I got from Mothy and the Squid. And um, this is 75% merino, 25% nylon. It's a four ply sock weight. Um, it's, super, it's super wash. And it came with um, seven, 10 mini skeins, I believe. I wound up these, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet for the traditional coloring of uh, the rainbow. But there were two greens, so there's the brighter green and then maybe just a more traditional green. There is another violet, more I call it magenta or ras raspberry or something. I'm sorry, that this one I would call raspberry. So a pink one, which didn't really fit. So the colors don't look exactly right. Maybe they look a little bit better that way. I love it. It's very bright um, set. So this is fingering weight. I'm pretty sure uh, looking at the picture on this book that they did used a worsted weight. So um, not using a pattern. I just measured his hand and knew my gauge with fingering weight. And I've made this much. I, I'm doing a true afterthought um, thumb on the mitten but I did not know I finished it this week the one this weekend I haven't started the other one but I finished it this weekend and he wasn't here so I uh, met, had him put it on yesterday and I think we're going to add the thumb right in um, maybe a, one line up into the yellow but I'd kind of like to start on one color and just do this thumb in green blue and the indigo so that it uh, lays down flat and matches so um this is uh, mittens, rainbow mittens for my grandson, and he did like them. He wanted to wear it and then um, wanted to do something else with it, so I took it away. So my next project that is a work in progress, I just put on the needles last night, and it is also a pair of mittens, but it's a pair of mittens for me. 
Um, I watched this Gain Deer podcast. I love her podcast. And she does a lot of color work if you've ever watched her. She is from Norway, lives in London. She's a PhD student and has this wonderful knitting podcast. She does uh, amazing color work and I do horrible color work. I have made a pair of color work mittens once long ago. I did give them to a friend as a gift. So I don't have them to show you. There is a project page. Um, it was a pattern out of um, Cascade Yarns, one of their uh, 60 knits projects. And I might as well show you what I do have. I have the pattern book. It's 60 Quick Knits. And this is the pair that I made. And I bought the suggested yarn colors. And I have enough to probably make another pair of these. But I truly, truly struggled make, uh, with those. I have difficulties tensioning yarn with my right hand. It's, um, I, I sometimes can get it, but it, it's difficult for me because I'm, I'm a continental knitter. And I also have difficulty tensioning two yarns in my right hand as continental. So my, I, I really want to improve those skills. I love so many color work things and I like making mittens. I, I think they're great fun to make. So I, um, saw that she created, I think it's a sock club, I'm not sure, but it was an ebook of patterns and she's releasing one a month for a total of five. Now the first one was a pattern that she'd already um, put out last year. So if you bought this, you got that pattern right away. And there's cell boo mittens, I believe. Anyway, the first pattern came out and um, I ordered some yarn and it came yesterday. My mail doesn't come till about five o'clock in the afternoon, so I didn't get the yarn until yesterday about five. And last night, after doing some other knitting, I decided, oh, I just, I just really want to cast them on. I want to do a gauge swatch. I want to see what size needle to use. The last, that pair that I showed you on the, the book there, when I made them, they were, they would never have fit me. Um, they were too tight, even though I had done a gauge swatch. But I did not do the gauge swatch as color work. I just, um, I get myself in a pickle a lot because I just kind of plunge in, oh, that's beautiful, I wanna make it, watch a few videos, and um, I just didn't realize how less elastic knitting is when you're doing color work, I've since learned, and that your gauge does change from, you know, I'm just thinking needle yarn, this, this'll work, it'll be the, the right size. And it was, and I should have gone up probably two needle sizes. So um, I was definitely going to do a gauge swatch. But then as I started, I thought, no, I really need to do it in the round because that makes a difference too. So as I started, I thought, well, I might as well just start it. And then I can use this as my gauge swatch. But if it works out, it'll be my mitten. So if that's my plan. I don't think most people don't like to do gauge swatches. I don't either, but I, I do when I worry about size on something. This is the yarn that, it was one of her suggested yarns, so it's attached to my knitting. So I'm not sure I can say it. I'm, I'm figuring out the G-A-R-N means yarn, maybe, but I'm not gonna try and read that to you. This is a winter white color. It's, I believe, color 100, or it's color 442. Not sure. Okay. I love this yarn. I love it. Now, it definitely sticks to itself, which is apparently helpful in color work. It's going to help the project out in the long run, especially after it's been washed. Um, but it actually sticks to itself a lot as you're just trying to pull it in and out. But I really like it. This is the second color that I chose. And it is um, a burgundy color. A um, little bit darker maybe than that showing, but that's pretty close. And again, this was a suggested yarn, so if you get the pattern and decide to do it, this will be uh, listed. I got it from um, the Yarnery online, and I will say they shipped it very quickly and packaged it just so nicely in a nice cellophane bag with a sticky label to hold it closed. And look what they enclosed. A little thank you written and two little... Um, sample size Euclid wool wash and I, that was so nice so I would definitely recommend them for quickness having exactly what um, I wanted shipping it so quickly and packaging it so nicely 
um, I really would recommend that. So here is the um, here are was what I have on the mittens. I'll t I stopped at midnight and said, okay, you, you've got to stop and go to bed. So I'm not good at this, and I was trying Magic Loop, which would be the way I would usually do any pair of mittens. But for some reason, after trying doing it first with for a little while with that, I pulled it off and started again on DPNs. I don't really know what I was thinking. This probably won't end up working. Um, that's what I have, which isn't very much. Let's like pull it like that. Now, floats, no idea. No idea if it's really right. I, I'm trying to do everything they're telling me, keeping, I am doing it two-handed, keeping one, the dominant color, the pattern color in my right hand, and the background color, which would be the white in my, I'm sorry, that's the reverse. Okay, keeping the, in my left hand, where I normally tension my yarn, is the pattern color, and my right hand has the white or the background color. So that's how I have it going. Um, what I think is maybe the problem is going around, if I was doing Magic Loop, I'd have two corners to turn. And this way I have four, and I think that float going around there may be tight. So then I had heard you could do it inside out, so I thought maybe I'll turn it inside out and knit on the far side. So it's apparently just exactly the same thing. In fact, I think I did that on something once for quite a while on a pair of socks. My very, very first socks, maybe. I was knitting on the back needle, but they, they're fine. So... I don't know. That way I'm thinking the float would, that would have a way to stretch out better. Or maybe I'll go to Magic Loop. I don't know. I really want to do these. And let me show you the pattern, which I didn't bother to show you by Skein Deer Knits. I'm not going to try to say that name either. If you watch her most recent podcast, she does say this, but she says it really fast and I can't repeat it that way. The same with the yarns. When she talks about yarns, she says it quickly and it leaves me puzzled as to how to say it, but I, aren't they pretty? I love these Norwegian mittens. I, I love every pair I've ever seen, I believe. So I'm, this is her first uh, first pattern in this ebook series. So this will, there'll be three more coming, and there was already one. I think she called it. They are Selbu mittens, but I think she called it Selbu mitten. I'm not positive. So that's my next, um, and I, I work in progress. I am using um, the Carbons, Knitter's Pride Carbons, size four. And I used um, a five on the beginning. She said to use a larger one and then go down. So I'm thinking this size might work for me. Um, so far, they're definitely looser than the other pair that I knit. Okay, um, my last work in progress is a shawl that I talked about casting on a while ago and then I got caught up with some other things. This is the Doodler Shawl by Stephen West. It's the first um, Stephen West pattern that I'm doing, although I have two others that I'd like to do. I'm not very far along. Just have, I think, um, several wedges, but there are quite a few wedges that you have to do. And um, the colors that I'm using for my main color, it's the speckled one here. And this is Zia Wolf, and this is her Roadrunner base yarn. It's um, a, a single, 100% superwash merino, and um, it's called Sterntaller. She's a German Andy Dyer, and um, I think that's a German word, might mean. I shouldn't say, but my brain t is t something t is telling me that I heard it was fairy tale. I could be totally wrong on that. The next color I'm using, this contrast color, is Malabrigo. It's a uh, chocolate Amargo, maybe eight twelve, and this is also a superwash merino. It is their sock yarn. Um, it's not a single. It's a plied yarn. I kind of wish it had. I had gotten a single for that because my third color, which hasn't shown up yet, is so this Malabrigo is a single. It's English Rose colorway 057, and this is going to be around the bottom of the shawl. 
The brown will also be across the top as well as the contrast between the different wedges in the pattern. So I, I love this pattern. So many people have made it in so many beautiful color combinations. It's really hard to decide. And after I decide on colors, um, then it's like, well, which one is which? So I hope I've made the right decision with that and that I'll be happy with it. But so far, I am. I'm just hoping that pink is what I'll be happy with at the uh, bottom. So our next segment is our uh, literature and fiber connection. And um, as if, if you haven't watched before, I'm a retired library media specialist from an elementary school and I'm sharing some different books that I used in that setting or just other books that I know of that perhaps I couldn't use in that setting. The, this one I did, I uh, read this to kindergartners, first graders, second graders, and it was loved by all. I love the story. You probably have heard of this one before, Extra Yarn. It's a fairly recent book by Mac Barnett, illustrated by John Clausen. He's illustrated um, a number of other books that I really like, and Mac Barnett's written other books that I really like. So there, it's a good combination there. So Extra Yarn is a story of a little girl, Annabelle, who finds a box of yarn that never gets empty. So it's a magic box. And um, I, I won't go into the whole story, but she knits and knits and knits, and she knits and covers all kinds of things in her town. She knits for everybody, all of her friends, and she runs out of um, she runs out of people to knit for. So she knits for the animals in the community. She covers houses, trucks, everything. And then um, the problem in the story happens when somebody finds out about this magic box and tries to get it from her. So I won't give away any more of the story than that. But if you have a young one that um, you want to share a book with that involves knitting, you might really consider this one as a good story. When I used it in the library, with kindergarten in particular, I always started off with some yellow yarn because you're always working on um, trying to reinforce concepts taught in the classroom. So yellow and yarn start with Y and if they're working on that. As the kids would come in, I would have knitting in my hand and it would be just be yellow yarn and we'd talk about you know what it was. And then I would start to read the story and I had a magic box of yarn. So actually I had more yarn in it at the time. It was really full of yarn. But uh, the way that I used it um, was in front of me. I had a little table that had a skirt around it and I had two boxes. And I, when I got to a certain point in the story, I would just kind of sit the box down so that I could hold the book up better. And then when the box is um, the box is stolen, I'll tell you, and then um, he, it gets thrown in the water because it's empty and it gets back to her and it's full. So I pull out an empty box and then we pull out the full box at the end. So for kindergartners, I'm not sure they totally bought it, but um, they did enjoy that, uh, doing that with the book. So that's a, a totally fictionalized story that you might enjoy sharing. And I do a giveaway for this particular copy of the book. I will send it out to someone who... Uh, follows me on Instagram and joins our In a Pickle Knitting knitting group on Ravelry. And I will put a thread in there called Extra Yarn. And if you'll just comment on how you'd like to use that book, what you'd like to do with it, I'll be happy to draw, draw a winner. And I'll do that in the middle of October if anybody joins it and uh, send on out on out to someone. I also still have a giveaway going for the Goat in the Rug. I said that I would pull that, I think, the middle of September. And there are a couple of entries there, but if you put your name in there, it's a really high probability that you could win that book. And that was the, what I showed on episode number two. So uh, check out the Ra Ravelry group and just re respond in a comment and you might be the recipient of one of those books. The next thing um, I wanted to talk about was I, I don't really share, uh, do stash enhancement other than through my projects that I'm working on, either finished projects or works in progress. I'll share yarns that I'm using. But I did want to, I just got um, uh, recently from Adelaide Cottage, I joined the Gilmore Girls Collection, which was a three month subscription with a new yarn coming every month and a progress keeper as well. And um, it's, I just have joined it a second time. She's doing it for an, another three months, and I just love this latest one that I received. I think it is, for me, the one of the prettiest skeins of yarn I've ever seen. I'm so happy that I did a mystery club like that to, to get this yarn. This is by Adelaide Cottage, and you can see beautiful shades of kind of a peachy yellow and this 
probably what she would call mauve. That's one of her favorite colors. It's on um, gold Stellina. And I think it can, if it comes out the way, I can see it on the screen right now. I hope it comes out that way. It's very sparkly. It's called Lorelei's Dream. And um, this is a 75% merino. Sorry about that little interruption. Uh, telephone again. So um, I think I was saying this is such a pretty yarn and I'm really gonna enjoy knitting this. I wanna find a really pretty shawl because I don't wanna hide this in a pair of socks. It's just too pretty of yarn. I think I was saying though that it was a 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% gold stellina, 100 grams, 437 yards. You'll see there is a nice twist to the yarn, which I do like for socks, but I like it anyway. I've done many shawl with yarn like that. So just a little, plug for this really gorgeous skein of yarn from Adelaide Cottage. And then I want to move on to some of the knit, knit alongs, craft alongs, make alongs that we have in our group. And one was the charity make along. And I don't believe I talked about a prize for that one, but I, I and I'm, I may add to this, uh, this prize, but for now I do have these four skeins of yarn. I did my preemie hats out of this yarn, the Peyton's Grace. So I have three different colorways for that. And then I did my knitted knockers from the Cascade Ultra Pima. So I have a skein of that in here as well. And um, when I think of other things to add to that, if I find, I would really like to get um, a DK weight uh, yarn like I did my hat out of. That, that's, that's, a, that's a charity knitting project. And I'm also going to enclose one of my project bags. This is a cupcake bag, and you'll notice that it has the cancer aware breast cancer awareness ribbons on some of the cupcakes. And so I thought this might go with the charity knit along. It is a very small bag. Um, it has a large <laughs> zipper that pulls all the way open so you can open the bag really um, a lot. The inside has a little patch pocket. The uh, lining is this frosting. And I'm gonna stick a it would hold that um, in there just fine along with your project. So um, definitely mittens could fit in here too. So it's a one zipper bag. The zipper pull is a little cupcake. has a detachable handle. It's machine quilted. And um, so I'm gonna enclose that as well. And I did uh, cupcakes for another reason as well. When I was, uh, before I retired at the school I was at for about the last five years, four to five years, every Monday I treated the staff to homemade cupcakes and I used a different recipe. I did a couple of repeats by request, but um, different cupcakes every week and would take them in. And I think I might start to share some of those on the podcast along with the recipe that I use. So um, that's something I'm thinking about doing. If you have a, if you think that's too much to add, I'm just going to throw it at the end. Um, if that's too much to add, then maybe I won't do that. But I was uh, cupcakes were a big part of my life for a long time because it was a weekly adventure into what I was going to make the next week. So when I saw this fabric, I, I had to go with it. So um, that's the end of any knitting part of the podcast, but I was going to talk this week about another craft that I've done before. Don't do it very much anymore just because of the point in my life that I'm at. Um, I used to do it a lot when um, my daughter was young. And what I'm talking about is English smocking. English smocking is something that you do on fabric and you pleat the fabric and you use something like this. Um, this is a pull and pleater and it has um, needles. You can get longer ones as well. These needles can be placed closer together or farther apart in these different grooves and they're very specialized needle. The needle's not straight, it's like this and then it dips down so that it can go into these channels. You thread them with a quilting thread or buttonhole twist, a pretty sturdy um, thread. And then you wind your fabric up and you turn the handle and you run it through the pleater. And so the needle pierces um, the fabric and then you end up with something like this. So this is a uh, pleated, you can see the little blue lines. That's the thread running through and it makes all these pleats. And what you do once it's pleated like this is you essentially do embroidery work on the outside piece of the pleat. So the pleat's going 
are going like this and you've got the thread running through them and you're just stitching into the top part and you, you go a certain depth into it. This, once it's the stitching is done, the smocking is actually done, will be a baby bonnet. Now this part, this pleat is just a, I mean this thread is just a guide, so this part right here will be a ruffle. This is also just a guide, so the smocking itself will just be done in this part. At the end I've got a little opening sewn that you thread a ribbon into, so, so it actually opens up through there, run a little uh, ribbon through there, and the back of the bonnet it can be cinched together and you can make that looser and looser as a head grows um, and this makes a baby bonnet. So this one was just in my project bag waiting for somebody to have a girl baby. Seems like every person I've known that I would make a gift like this for has had a boy baby so this particular one just doesn't fit for that. So I started smocking about 29 years ago. And my very first project was this little dress for my daughter. Okay, so you can see the embroidery that's been done on there is stitched through those pleats. And then when you're done stitching, you pull the threads out and it leaves a very elastic fabric that because these embroidery stitches are stitched in and amongst these pleats, it, it allows it to come right back. Okay. So this is English smocking and these designs here are printed out for you on what are called smocking plates and you can do all sorts of interesting designs. Um, get that pretty close so you can see those are like little flowers and little hearts and lots of zigzags. Usually at the top you will put um, just a run, run of stitches just to keep it tight whereas at the bottom you don't always have that but this particular uh, dress. So uh, this was the first thing I ever smocked. I made this little dress for her and you pleated this part and um, did the smocking and then sewed the dress together. So another dress, this is one of my favorites and it was actually made out of a scrap of fabric that I had, just a simple little piece of cotton striped fabric. I just did a little um, machine hem stitch at the bottom for the hem and um, it's very thin and light but at the time I made this we lived in Florida where it was um, really hot and this was a perfect little dress. I'll show you the back as well. It uh, crisscrosses with these buttons so it's actually open here. Very um, air, it, cr it crosses over here so it's, it's pretty much okay. Very lightweight dress and I could not run this through the smocking the uh, pleater because it would not no matter how careful I was, I couldn't get it to always take these stripes in the same exact place. So I hand pleated it and then um, did the embroidery work on top. I don't know if that's getting a good look at the smocking. So I always think of this kind of like a counted cross stitch um, on f fabric that doesn't have, you know, preset holes in it because just the way you're, the embroidery work just remind me a lot of my counter crosses. This was a pattern called Mary D printed by Children's Corner. I don't know if they still make that pattern because this is a really really old pattern but um, this is a little smocked dress. You can smock for adults as well. This is a skirt that I made for myself. Um, don't fit in this. So from the skirt top it you'll see it had these spots like this which then allowed it to be you know pretty open okay so that's a skirt I've done many many smocking uh, things one thing that I made for my daughter was a commu first communion dress and this is a dress with a detachable collar and if you see the smocking up close you'll see there are some little uh, beads in there and then the dress itself had a little, just a little um, collar on it, but there is smocking at the sleeve, which instead of elastic, you have the smocking and smocking at the waistband. And then the bottom of the dress is just finished off with uh, Swiss lace, which is um, machine embroidered on a 
batiste fabric and then you know cutouts very intricate so this dress could be worn without the collar or then put the uh, the collar over the top so that was uh, another smocked outfit and then this is a little kind of jumpsuit this was an Oliver Gooden pattern don't remember the particular one um, so smocked here you see using printed fabric like that or you know that has lines crisscross checks here on the gingham you do get some kind of wavy lines but I did I ran it through several times so I was finally happy with this this particular one you just smocked this and sewed it into the garment so the back was pretty cute with a, a deep back and a button a little opening here just so you just stuffed into it and button this up and tied this and it is pants with a little cuff at the bottom so she was about five yeah five when I made this for her a little sail sailboat outfit so that's a little bit of my English smocking that I did. I love to smock it. Um, it was uh, satisfied sewing for me as well as some stitching. And um, I would do it again. I don't think it's anywhere near as popular as it was at the time that I started smocking. It was fairly popular. We had little smocking shops. There used to be one here in Virginia. It's a little ways away. Did a lot of our... Um, smocking you had to order through companies and this is pre-internet days so there was you know you, you didn't get good catalogs or you couldn't really look at things very well but I did order a lot from a company in Maryland called the smocking bonnet you did the smocking with the same DMC embroidery floss that I did kind of cross stitch with so I had lots and lots of embroidery floss because I had cross stitch for many many years when I before I started smocking so um, English smocking um, along with um, hand sewing garments. You can purchase, or you could, purchase garments, for instance, like this, where this would be pleated with the thread still in it, and um, but no design embroidered on it, for people who didn't sew but like to smock, and then you would smock your design. But since I sewed, I uh, actually enjoyed the sewing, smocking process. So, uh, thanks so much for listening today. If you've stuck it out this long, I really appreciate it. Thank you if you've um, come back from watching previous episodes or welcome also if this is your first episode. I hope you liked it. I hope you saw something that inspired you to create something new or just inspired you to continue working on what you are working on. As I said, we have a Ravelry group. Um, I am C-L-A-U-S-S-D-K on Ravelry. On Instagram, I'm rclausen one on um, in our Ravelry group we have in a pickle knitting as a group and then my podcast YouTube channel is in a pickle knitting so those are the places you can find me I'll also have a gmail account in a pickle knitting at gmail.com if you'd like to send me an email about anything I'm more than happy to respond to you on any any questions you have there's a question thread in the Ravelry group and um, Gosh, what else? I, I'm sure I'm leaving lots of things out. I do, in my editing process, try to add anything that I might have forgotten to say. If not at the bottom of the screen, then at the very end of the episode. So this was, well, episode three. Thanks so much for being here today with me. And I hope that you'll come back again. If you liked it, I'd really appreciate the like button being pressed. If you'd like to see another episode when they come up, please hit subscribe. And again, have fun with your knitting and happy knitting.